Today I want to briefly compare the doctrine of election in Karl Barth, John Calvin, Martin Luther, and Friedrich Schleiermacher. Now the way I want to do this is I'm going to ask a pertinent question to the doctrine of election, and then I'm going to say how I think each individual theologian would answer that question. And now obviously each of these uh, theologians are immensely complex, and I don't want to try to smooth over some of their complexities, but in, instead I hope this is kind of a helpful way to introduce you to each of these individuals and their doctrine of election and what makes them different. So question one, who does the divine decree address? For both Calvin and Luther, the divine decree addresses individuals. For Schleiermacher, the divine decree addresses humanity. For Barth, the divine decree addresses Jesus Christ, and only then humanity in him. Question 2. Is predestination single or double? For Luther, it is a single decree of all those whose faith God foreknows. For Calvin, it is a double decree of election and reprobation. For Schleiermacher, it is a single decree for all humanity. And for Barth, it is a double decree of Jesus Christ as both the elect and reprobate for our sake. Question 3. Who are the elect? For Luther, it is those whose faith God has foreseen. For Calvin, it is those who preordained, who are preordained to election due to God's good uh, pleasure. For Schleiermacher, all humanity are the elect. And for Barth, Jesus Christ is the elect. Now, question 4. Who are the reprobate? For Luther, it is those who resist faith. For Calvin, it is those preordained to reprobation. Uh, for Schleiermacher, it's temporarily those who are not yet regenerated, but eternally, it is no one. Now, I just want to pause to explain a little bit here. This is one of the more fascinating aspects of Schleiermacher's understanding of election. Um, and it's definitely an innovative approach to make reprobation a temporal and a, or a temporary um, event in history, a phenomenon in history, but election as a eternal will, an eternal event for all time. And really, I just want to sh briefly state that that somewhat echoes Paul in Romans nine through eleven. At least that's Schleiermacher's intention, uh, particularly verse uh, or chapter eleven, verse thirty-two, where God has imprisoned all to disobedience in order to have mercy on all. Uh, thus, for Schleiermacher, reprobation is a temporary phenomenon, while election is eternal. And then uh, finally, for, for Bart, uh, the answer to this question, which was again, who are the reprobate? For Bart, the reprobate is Jesus Christ on our behalf. Now, question five, what is the role of death in election? For both Luther and Calvin, death is the final cutoff point. Um, for Schleiermacher, death is a stage in development. Um, a person's state of being at death is not permanent, and those who die as reprobates will not remain so eternally. Now, this again is one of Schleiermacher's more unique innovations, um, and it connects quite well with the previous idea that reprobation is only a temporal event, a temporal phenomenon, um, but election is eternal. So all, all are elect, but they can be reprobate in, in a temporary sense, but that reprobation is always a no for the sake of a greater yes. Now, for Bart, he doesn't really address this as much, um, and my suspicion is that he likely defaults to both Luther and Calvin's approach to this, that death is somewhat of a cutoff point. Um, I'm not sure he would use that exact terminology. Now, I, I've not really found any indication that he would accept the idea that Schleiermacher points out to. Um, it's not really a pertinent question for Bart's doctrine of election, I guess, is the main thing I want to say for that. Question six, is salvation universal or particular? Does God will for all to be saved? So for Luther, God's will is universal, but the success of salvation is particular. Only some will be saved. For Calvin, God's will is particular, and the success of salvation is also particular. So only some will be saved. For Schleiermacher, God's will and the success of salvation are both universal. What God wills, God does. Thus, all will be saved. For Bart, God's will and the success of salvation are universal because both are declared objectively as already accomplished in the reconciliation of Jesus Christ. But for Bart, universal salvation is ultimately God's question, and so he leaves it ambivalent. He doesn't, he doesn't try to resolve that question, so he won't state as much like Schleiermacher does that all will be saved. So with that said, those are the six questions that I kind of wanted to use to compare and contrast the different contours of these individual theologians and how they answer the questions uh, that are pertinent to election. And so I hope it's helpful for you to understand some of their differences. 
Um, but I just want to conclude with a few points just to kind of reflect a little bit more about what the implications of this can mean. So both Calvin and Luther's doctrine of elections follow a classic Augustinian logic, um, but both Bart and Schleiermacher um, break away from that in their own very unique ways. Uh, Schleiermacher can be seen in some regards as a midway point between Calvin and Bart, um, and I've always felt that there is somewhat of an unspoken debt that Bart owes to Schleiermacher's doctrine of election, um, which is in itself quite innovative. Um, but while there are, they have some similar impulses, uh, namely one of the most distinct, distinguishing impulses that both Bart and Schleiermacher share is the move away from action, election being about individuals. Both Schleiermacher and Bart would say, no, the election is not about individuals. For Schleiermacher, the election is for the God's election of all humanity. For Bart, it's God's election of God's self, uh, the choice to, to be God for us. And so that is Bart's um, significant change to the doctrine of election. And so Schle Schleiermacher went beyond Calvin and Luther's individualistic doctrine and stressed that the will of God is for all humanity. Um, but Bart also kind of went alongside this and, and criticized Calvin for what he saw as being a too abstract doctrine of election, uh, a doctrine which posits a will of God behind the back of Jesus Christ. Uh, but Bart takes Schleiermacher's non-speculative doctrine further by stressing the centrality of Jesus Christ for election. He thus argues that election is primarily about God electing God's self in the person and work of Jesus Christ, to be at once the electing God and the elected human being. And in the same way, he is the rejecting God and the one of rejected human being. And therefore, uh, he is rejected for our sake, and he's elected for our sake. And so all who are elect are elect in the election of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and so for Bart, the word of election is holy good news because it is, the now, it is the announcement that God is for us in Jesus Christ, that there's no hidden will behind the back of Jesus Christ for us to fear. So thus, in Christ, God says yes and not no to the human race. And so um, the other aspect of this is the um, question of universalism. Obviously, Schleiermacher, in my reading of him, um, necessarily affirms universalism. It's, it's integral to his theology that God will save all. Um, but for Bart, um, there's a lot of debate about this in Bart's thought. And I have another video that does talk about Bart and universalism, and I've touched about it in my book on Bart some. Um, but Bart leaves it ambivalent. He doesn't want to say yes or no. He does proclaim... Uh, the finished work of the cross and the finished work of the good news of, of, of Christ that we've ob objectively been reconciled to God and what Christ has accomplished. But he's hesitant to affirm universalism because of the non-objectifiability of God, which is a central aspect of Bart's theology. God cannot become an object that we can predict or control. And therefore, Bart stresses that universalism is a question that only God can and will one day answer. And so that's why he leaves that a little bit more open-ended. Um, so hopefully that's a bit helpful for you. Obviously, there's um, so much more that you can go into with each of these individuals. Um, we mostly focus on Schleiermacher and Bart, just because most are, most people are probably familiar with Calvin and Luther, at least in some degree. Um, in their own right, they have very fascinating approaches to the question of election and, and of double predestination or single predestination. Um, and so in no way do I think that this does them any justice, nor does it do justice to Schleiermacher and Bart. Um, but I hope this kind of just gives you some of the points of difference between them and how they uh, answer some of these, these pertinent questions um, in unique ways. And so if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. But for now, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and have a great day.